That guitar always sounds magnificent. Always. It's amazing. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right. What a terrible couple of weeks we've had. It's been a trip, hasn't it? It's been rubbish. We had to go... What do we have to do? We had to go all the way to America to hang out with Analog Man. And Andy. And Andy Timmons in... in uh, yeah. In um, Times Square. At the Iridium. Totally rubbish, wasn't it? Yeah. Just, what a drag. Uh, then we had to get on a plane and go to Minnesota, to Rift City. Had a terrible time there. I mean, I don't know. And then we had to go to Real World Studios. Oh, what, yeah, bummer. Hang out in the big room. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a mad couple of it's weeks. It's been surreal. And we haven't been sat in this room for a couple of weeks as no. a result. I was in Vienna yesterday. Oh, rubbish. It just with, keeps getting worse. With, with Greg Howe. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Surreal. Surreal, Surreal couple of weeks. Just amazing. The, the context of which isn't to like be massively showing off. It's to say that all, that, all of that cool stuff is coming up on that Pell Show. Showing up a little bit. Yeah, all right. A little you know. bit. But all that cool stuff is coming up on that Pell Show where we've been out and we've done some interesting things of late um, to, to, you know, stretch our legs a bit and mm. see what we can learn. Uh, and it's been a couple of weeks since we've been sat in here, so mm. hearing the amps roaring, being back in the room, uh, yeah, nice, nice to be home. Very nice. Oh, amazing, amazing. So what and, we do? And tell you what, it's amazing being being in the room with the amps volume, considering everywhere we've been. And I do think we're a couple of lucky lads to be able to do this, and because the difference yeah, it makes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference it makes is... Oh, it's just everything, isn't it? Yeah. It's everything. Um, Catherine keeps telling me off because uh, we do, we're not using the That Pedal Show mugs to drink our coffee out of. <laughs> so there are That Pedal Show mugs available, by the way. But We have but tiny little bits of very strong coffee. Mm. And, and they're all the way over there. I can't reach. They're nice, though. Yeah, anyway. Anyway. What are we doing today? Right. We're going to have a look at... Sorry. I've got to resolve that. There we go. Um... We're going to have it was a look. An imperfect cadence, was it? We, it was. T there's a lot of imperfectness about that. <laughs> We're going to have a look at some modern fuzzers. Uh, so, as Mick said, we just spent some time with Analog Man, and whether this video comes out before or after that, the, you know, we, so we've been sort of immersed in the world of amazing fuzz. With some of the ba the best fuzz tones I've ever heard, actually, that day. Was it's so mad, isn't it? Because you spend so many years playing with fuzz faces and playing around with all this stuff, and you think you've got it down, mm. and then you go and hang out with Mike for... A Hello, Mike, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And um, you just think... And you're like, oh, God, oh, there's so much more yeah. left to learn. And it, it was there is a whole video coming out on that. So, as Dan said, it may be before or after this one. Yeah. So, I wanted to have a look at some... Um, so, what Mike does is he's, he takes that classic circuit and he understands it and he understands every element of what makes it the harmonics and the, the, the attack and, you know, and, and he knows how to eke the most out of that with um, the way that he sources his components and, yeah. you know, it's, I wanted to have a, a bit of a left turn of that and have a look at some modern fuzzers that do something a bit different than just the classic yeah, so here we're, we're stepping out onto the ice of the otherworldly, yeah. weird, odd sounds. There's some, there's some thin ice there as well. I'm, I'm very heartened to see we finally got some Zvex on the board. Yes. Massive thank you to Eric. Yeah. Uh, um, Eric Sexy. Yeah. Who we hooked up with in Surreal, right? Who, uh, so we, we had an amazing hang with, with Eric and Joel. Um, Corty. From Chase, John yeah, Corty yeah. from Christmas Audio. Who happened just to be down the road from just. Rift City there, yeah, there yeah. in the Minnesota area. So. so And Eric hooked us up with some Zvex stuff, which is so thank you, Eric. Really appreciate that. Right, okay, so um, where to begin? I'm going to leave, leave the Fuzz Probe for a second. Yeah. Because. Should we start with the most traditional? Okay. Do you think? Would that work? All right, well, start, let's start with the veteran. That's what we heard at the beginning. Was it? That's what that was? That's what the. Mm. That was the veteran. Um, so. You know, we've had Thorpey's pedals on the show since the beginning. Uh, a little while ago, he released a very limited version of the Veteran. And I managed to get one. 
happening today on the side like that? To Mick, enjoy Thorpey. <laughs> uh, so this is his germanium um, transistor, like a like a fuzz face circuit, with a range Dallas um, Dallas Harper range master side. So circuit. similar in in essence to what Mike does with the Sun, Sun Lion. Lion. Yep, yep. Yeah, very similar. Um, so you know, it's the basic. Uh, First face with a bias control on the outside and the smooth feature, which just changes the attack. Yep. Now, he only made a hundred of these. Yep. And they went... Because um, presumably he had limited trans had very, yes, transistors. Exactly. And everyone's been sort of screaming out for a veteran. So what he's done, he's managed to find some really nice silicon sounding um, transistors that he can actually get hold of and voice it in a way that sounds epic so if you um yeah okay let's go with the strat today's amps are uh marshall 1987x which is the reissue 50 watt plexi and uh the real 1961 ac 30 and there's another video that we're shooting today which uh, or maybe tomorrow which will be interesting for those two amps okay so if you want to just have a with that for a second so we use a clean sound Put a bit of reverb on that, it sounds delightful. It's so mad, I've been used to playing with so much reverb just recently that that sounds completely... Yeah, anyway. Drier than a North Australian sense of humour. Yeah, anyway. Just as we were setting levels, as we were setting up there, once again we remark on how crazy Dan's guitar sounds compared to mine. Mad. So the telly's pushing the amps into a bit of clip there where the strap isn't really, which is starts to get interesting as we get into the fuzzes. Yes. Groovy. All right. Veteran then. Yeah. Veteran. So we start off with the fuzz face side. Yep. So the two questions I normally have about a fuzz face circuit are how does it clean up off the volume pot and what is that kind of bite point? Is yes. anyone that has used a vintage style fuzz face, which we go into in great detail in the in the Analog Man video, um, is on a strap particularly, it kind of should go from pretty super spanky clean mm -hmm. to really heavy overdrive. Mm -hmm. Have we got there? So we've got uh, the volume, the bias, the smooth, and the fuzz. Right. So I believe the fuzz pretty much. All the yeah, way up. yeah. With the bias control, does it get uh, spittier as you turn it around to the right or to let's the left? Look. Let's have a look. So, left. Yeah. On the um, sorry, as a we, we're going to have to get moving, but on a slight tangent, Eric Johnson likes silicon first faces, mm -hmm. and apparently he has his uh, transistors bias quite high, right? Which gives you that spitty, mm -hmm. slightly spittier. So right. the Dunlop signature Eric Johnson first face is a bit spittier, to use the phrase, than your standard kind of woollier. Oh, could be a, could be a day for adjectives. Let's try that. <laughs> Kind of 
fits a little bit with what Mike was saying to us about silicon and germanium in mm -hmm. that silicon seems not always but sometimes can be high again and doesn't clean up yeah in the same way that germanium does off the volume pot yeah is it, is it the tape? So for, for me, that's really smooth for a silicon fuzz. It's getting into, to me, it's getting into the sort of upper ends of where something like the broadcast yeah, right. works as a, as a wide range, a uh, wide range, <laughs> what it? Uh, a wide range um, overdrive pedal. We're not drunk, honestly. It's just the first video uh, we've done in a couple of weeks. And yeah, it takes a little while to get going. Um, so, uh, all the silicon fuzzes I've got won't do that. Right. They won't do that pushed overdrive thing. Yeah, right. As convincingly as that does. Mm. Um. That's really nice. Can you work out what's happening with the smooth control? Is yeah. it putting more bass into the... So, so it's overdriving the bottom end more. Is it? Uh, it's, I think it's like a almost like an input thing. So actually, the the cleanup thing happens ha actually works better when, when it's, it's high bias and loads of gain and when it's cranking. Yeah. yeah, right. Cool. Okay. Very nice. So we add to that. We add to that the the range master. So if you imagine you've got this massive fat fuzz thing, and one of the one of the issues with soloing with a sound like that, especially in a dense mix, as Roy said, it can be difficult to cut through. What yeah. the range master does, and it's also after the fuzz circuit. Um, the, is it just tightens everything up? The veteran doesn't seem to be suffering badly with wooliness, though. No. I mean, He's, maybe um, let's let's try some. Would you pass me that other guitar, please, Daniel? With the humbuckers. I mean, this isn't a woolly sounding guitar, but it is humbuckers, so it's going to drive everything a little bit mm. more, maybe.
That is ace. That <laughs> sounds is... so cool. Okay. Um, okay. So now, but take that sound and we we'll put yeah. the range master after it. Is ace. Both of the amps are set on the right on the edge of breakup, so mm -hmm. the strat didn't really push them into breakup. The telly did, I suspect this might as well. Is that just both the amps? Ah oh, sorry, both amps C8. Yeah, not not massively. We've got the Marshall attenuated a bit so that we can push it a little bit more but even then it's still pretty open still pretty open yeah yeah, yeah. so beautiful okay so that was uh, uh half an hour on the veteran uh, nice uh. <laughs> uh. all right um let's have a look at the this is the mark IV um from scotty at pro analog we have looked at this pro, sorry, pro analog devices he gets a little bit upset if you just call it pro analog it's oh well pro analog I, I have devices. to uh, uh, Apologise to you, Scotty, in this uh, in today's video. Then, because in the description box in the YouTube uh, thingy that you have to write in for the description box and the title of the video, it can only be a certain number of characters. So devices had to go today, I'm afraid. Uh, in the um, pick and mix video that's going up on Tuesday, the seventh of November. Okay, but he's written it really small. Hmm? See, it's, he's written it really small. Yeah. It's, it's easy to miss. Okay, so we have looked at this before, and you have told me that it's kind of tone bendery kind of uh well it, it to me it sounds a little bit tone bendery but he assures me that it's not but what so it's modern in the sense that it is a a, a step forward of a vintage design rather yes. than something overt absolutely modern. so okay. so instead of having any tone shaping about this it's all about the gain stacking right right so if we um if i have the drive and the attack just at, at noon and then you have a go on that one. Just awesome. So you basically, um, it's the same as with the, the manticore. You've got your drive and the, the attack sort of drives the that, that yeah. side of the, the yeah, yeah. drive circuit. Yeah. So, and it, just by changing 
the amount of um, gain and the amount of attack going into it, you can get some really great different textures. So this is loads of attack, just a little bit of drive. It's so harmonically rich. It's unbelievable, isn't it? <clears throat> it's it's so great. Um, you know, I've been a, a fan of Scotty's for for ages, and there's always something unique. Yeah. In there, I think having that one one of the disadvantages of very vintage style fuzzes is that you get kind of all or nothing, and there's no tweakability, mm. which is part of the charm. Yeah. But if you want to step forward from that, then adding an extra feature or two enables you to get that sort of. It's almost like um, gain and master in an amp, isn't it? Yes where you can balance that ideal place of overdrive and output equally true in a, yep. in a pedal. Have, yep. a, have a, a schwang. Interesting. It's funny as you um, so it was working almost as a clean boost there with mm. the, with the two fuzz controls down and the volume up. It, quite interesting. Once the fuzz frequencies start happening, the way it was pushing the AC30, I could hear that it was pushing that top end, and right. getting more into that treble boostery world. Yeah. Really it's, cool. Yeah, and really, it's really detailed. Um, like neck pickup on the Telecaster, for example. The the. They can sound quite harsh in isolations, those fuzzy clean sounds, but in a band, uh, all it's magic. the frequencies are there just to just yeah. to poke through, aren't they? It's really, really magic. Okay, um, so let's let's have a look at the um, Zvex stuff now. So this is the um, the new uh, Fuzz Factory Seven. This is the hand painted version. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> declare a, I, my knowledge of Zvex stuff isn't. Fantastic. Right. So I haven't come through the Zvex um, lineage, if you like. So I don't have a lot of prior knowledge. So okay. we're on a voyage of discovery we're here. On a voyage of discovery. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, if you can imagine, um, like the original, so the original fuzz, fuzz factory, in a fuzz circuit, yes. Yeah. That one. In a fuzz circuit, you've got. Um, it's a very simple circuit, and you've got a couple of. Um, well, there's a bunch of points in there that you can where you adjust the gain of the transistors and um, you know that sort of stuff. And well, instead of fixing those points, um, what the fuzz factory does is it just puts pots on all of those points, so you okay. can mess with everything that creates that that fuzz. The so character. stuff like resistor values and yeah, is it so that kind of thing? Exactly. Or? So those yeah. resistor values, instead of just being a fixed point, yeah. He said, well, why don't I just put pots on all those so that you can mess around and find the sound that you like. And that sort of became the original Fuzz Factory. This is the the sort of latest one that has a couple of extra controls. So as a um, so just I've got it set up at the moment. This pretty 
tame, as in tame for a Zvex fuzz factory. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> These are the controls. Tone, volume, you'll sort of know. Drive, you'll know. Then we've got fat, stab, comp, and gate. Okay? I'm gonna leave the stab sort of all the way to the right for the moment, because then when I turn it in, you'll sort of see what it does. So now, if you have Schwang, I'm gonna move the fat control around. I don't know what it is about fuzz sounds like that always make me want to play something atonal. Etc. No, so completely gated. Completely gated. There's a new Queens of the Stone Age single. You can have that, Josh. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, I can bypass the tone circuit. Let's just put a bit... Yeah! So we're kind of, you know, hanging on there, you know, it all sounds great. But now when I start to reduce this stab control, you get this. <laughs> So, you know, it does sound wonderful, but it doesn't sound, there's nothing vintage about that at all. No, but that's great. It's that, amazing. You're answering the question, I need a f 
crazy ass fuzz sound and That's, I don't yeah. want a vintage fuzz because they don't work for me. Yeah. Endlessly tweakable. Right. I, can, I can see this. I, we're sort of teetering at the top of a of a fuzzy slope here. Yeah. As we get into this, and you know, if you, for anyone watching this, if you're really into your tweaky fuzzes and all of that kind of stuff, you're going to be watching this, going, "Oh, come on, guys! This can't be the first time you've heard a, a an out there fuzz." And no, it isn't. But I think a voyage of discovery on this show using our apps and all mm. of that it will be an interesting yeah definitely. Kick -off. And don't forget, I mean, fuzz fuzz is simply a genre. You know, it's and it's like saying, um, you know. You know, we spend a lot of time with drive pedals and, you know, tube drive pedals and transistor drive, op amp drive pedals, you know, they, the palette is crazy. Fuzz, it, you take that, multiply that by 10. Equally crazy, yeah. You know, um, it, it's the different textures and things that are available. Because, because you're clipping so hard and the harmonics and everything that are involved with that, it's incredible, mm. you know, the different tones you can get. Um, right, so moving on from the craziness to more crazy... <laughs> What? I remember when I saw one of these for the first time on Guitarist magazine. Comes through the post. Like, okay. So that, so that, that. Um, okay. I just want to read you the um, the first line of the manual of the Zvex Fuzz Pro. Congratulations! You must be insane. <laughs> Even I don't get how to use this pedal. <laughs> but this sheet will explain the probe portion. Awesome. That's so we're the on, manual. We're on safe ground. Right. Okay, so that squeal thing that we did with the, the stab. Yeah. Well, he's put that in a theremin, right, which is operated, which is sort of controlled by this brass plate here. Now, you'll see here, when I touch it, I want to get close to it with my finger, how the LED starts to flicker. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. So... I'm going to turn this on. I want you to play. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to do some stuff with my hand, and then you can do the stuff with your foot. Right. right? Where, is the, where is the where is the where is it's just this brass plate. Anywhere on the, any pressure on this brass plate. Physical pressure or well yes. I mean it's it's sensing the if you want to get really close to it. Yeah. Right. Okay. But so you play play call for us. I'm desperately trying to remember the solo to the Led Zepp song and I don't know it at all. That one. Right. Because that would have worked for this, but you know, if Philax was here, he could have done that. Go on then. So hit the 14 for us.
I, so there's many things about that I love. I love, ultimately I love that you can actually buy that. I love that you can walk into a store and say, here are some fun vouchers, give me that. <laughs> give me fun. Give me fun. It's incredible. I mean, it's the most unique thing, you know. And obviously, uh, hopefully you would have been able to see some of what I was doing from the old um, GoPro there, but um, the interaction of the controls, this comp, uh, the gate, mm -hmm. the stab yep. control were all absolutely, completely interactive yep. and, and, yeah. It's huge. Nothing massively predictable, but I guess you could get to a point where you you know, a certain action would elicit a certain response, but it's not really the point of these pedals, is no. it? So from the ridiculous to the sublime, <laughs> um, I also wanted to include this. Now, this is the Velvet Fuzz from Wampler. What, now, am I not saying that right? Wampler. <laughs> okay, that's correct. Wa Wampler. As in, oh, what, Wampler. Wom oh, oh, Wampler. okay, Wampler. Yeah, hello, Brian, and everyone at Wampler, by oh, the way. Oh, okay, right, as in That's the Wamping saying, Willow. I'm sure it's just a, a, an accent thing. Sounds better in a minor key. Wampler. Wampler. <laughs> right, when this first came out, um, I mean, I used this for ages. It's it's a great sounding fuzz. What I, what I like about this, if, if the craziness is not something that you're after, and you want something that does, you know, cool fuzz tones and you sort of or you might just be getting into fuzz you know something that's appropriate for lots of sounds this is a fantastic pedal it's very interesting that because back to if you rewind a little bit to what we were talking about earlier when we were saying if you've tried a fuzz face and maybe i don't know a tone bender for there's sort of three-ish vintagey fuzzes that tend to cover the ground aren't yep. there fuzz face tone bender Big Muff. Yes. There are others, obviously, but really those are the three. Understand those three and you go. Those are the those are the three camps. And if you've kind of tried all of those and they don't really work for you, as you were saying, your route then is, okay, do I go weird mm -hmm. and wonderful and experimental, fuzz factory, that kind of thing. And many other manufacturers do crazy fuzzes too. Or are you saying now, actually, what I just want is a more controllable, really good fuzz yeah. sound? Because with all those classics comes a whole different bunch of rules, like with buffers and impedance things. And, you know, if you might hear, as I did, heard some fuzz on some, you know, Henry stuff and thought, that sounds great. Grabbed a fuzz, it just, I couldn't make it work. If there was buffers around it, it sounded like garbage. It was Jimi yeah. Hendrix. It was, it was, well, it was me trying to, trying to make a fuzz work in the middle of a, um, a pedal board that I didn't really understand back in the, you know, back in the day. But... So if yeah, you grab actually, it remind, all those memes on uh, on Facebook that say Jimi Hendrix didn't have any true bypass. Well, that's really significant, actually. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So why this is great is you can grab this, you stick it anywhere on your pedal board. It's going to sound fantastic. You know, it's sort of because it's the way it's made. It works great with buffers. Um, you know, but it still sounds great. So have a have a go on this one. <laughs> Thick, and that's on the tight setting. It'll make it make, make it thicker. I've never been in a stoner rock band, but that's that sound. But to, in my brain, that that is kind of what that sound probably is. Some, right. Something like. <laughs> Great. Okay. It works really well. So, you know, you got a, the you got a big and tight control, and then a tone control, which is a lot of fuzzes just don't have that. That's what that tone. So there's a brightness thing. Let's is, try that. So. Yeah.
I guess that type thing really comes into its own. If you were down tuning, no, I'm not going to go all the way, but that's what she said. <laughs> um. See, it's definitely a fuzz pedal. It's not a distortion trying to be a fuzz. It's definitely a fuzz. But, you know, I think if you've tried a bunch of fuzzes that haven't worked for you, that's definitely an option. Here with the Sony. Interesting. Certainly a million miles along from, you know, as we were saying, your standard type vintage yeah. fuzz pedal. And of course, if you're if you're into this world and you, and you've you've gone down this rabbit hole, you'll be a million miles ahead of us already. But for anyone who's not, maybe this is the beginning of our journey mm. along that path. And uh, your suggestions and experiences with it would be most welcome in the in the comments. Yeah, for stuff that we should try as well, because I. I I'm 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 feeling uh, I'm being drawn towards this. Yeah, because there is there is a sense of um, familiarity about it, in that they are fuzzers, and that you know we I think because the the sort of the classic thing that we both sort of are drawn to. Yeah. There's a you know there's a sound that was like oh yeah no I get that, but then there's the the sort of dynamic um, you know things like the fuzz probe. Well, it and just make, it, it demands that you play different stuff, it, that's which exactly is useful right. in itself. Yeah, and if you let yourself be drawn by the sound of the pedal and sort of be led by that, yeah. you know, it can bring out things that you know you perhaps wouldn't have discovered otherwise. And I love days. that. I absolutely I, I, love that. Sometimes on a, you know when we'll do a show, 
it'll be oh yeah there'll, there'll be kind of an, the obvious pedal that we're really drawn towards but every single one of those every single one of those I would be really happy to muck about with and get yeah. sounds and, yeah. and be able to use I mean obviously the fuzz probe is its own thing and mm -hmm. is is bizarre it sounds like I mean it's a great fuzz it is a great fuzz without the probe yeah it is I mean it's it's the it's the fuzz factory oh okay it's a fuzz factory circuit but with the with a probe yeah yeah Ooh, I see some long nights ahead. Okay. <laughs> and on that note. Brilliant, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Yes, we uh, as of today, we're at 111,000 subscribers. Really? Yeah. Dude. Crazy. Amazing. Only 900 and something thousand, no, 800 and something thousand to go. 189,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's telephone numbers, isn't it? Let's be honest. Uh, Massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. It is Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. In the USA, it is everyone at Riff City Guitar. Hello to you guys. Yes, we guys. came over. We had a fantastic couple of days. It was amazing uh, in uh, Minneapolis there. And to everyone who came down, and because yeah. so, you know, we did a, a live that pedal show. Yeah, which at will, will also be going out on on this channel soon. Yeah, in there in New Hope, uh, Minnesota. It was we had such a great time. Yeah. And Pedal Empire. And Pedal Empire in Australia, who I'm going to see uh, in December. Over Christmas. Over Christmas. It's going to be on the Saturday, the 8th or the 9th. Whatever that Saturday is, or the 8th or the 9th of December. I'm going to be popping in to say hi. Yeah, so if you're around that weekend uh, in Brisbane, near Pedal Empire, go and say hello to Dan. Awesome. Cool. Uh, finally, we do have some man-friendly uh, Raglan t-shirts. Man-friendly because they're not white. No. I, when we have white ones, I don't know about you and laundry, but I can't keep anything oh, white. Oh, dude. dude. Two, two wears and I'm done. Yeah. So it's, it's like, oh, you've been drinking again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, if you've got some new baseball tees in the That Pedal Show store, please go and have a look at them. Yeah. And if, if, and if you really like the show, but you, you're not that overtly you know, confident about telling everyone these are really good. We have deliberately because... knocked the logo back to be subtle subtle for those of you who don't like garish logos on things. yeah you're like oh, i like the mm. english show but this is you know you could be there sipping your champagne cocktail there at an afternoon dinner party uh an afternoon dinner party uh, an afternoon <laughs> garden party confidently in your that pedal show t-shirt right i think and then when someone says to you what, what does that say then yeah. you can start up the conversation yeah and you can find out if they're if they're saying well, well actually dear boy i watch that pedal show as well <laughs> Or you could be down the pub having a pint of mild. A pint of mild? Yeah. Eop. Very good. I haven't What's that pedal show? <laughs> that happened. What's that pedal show? <laughs> if we just add in everyone else in the world that we could offend right now, let's just do that and uh, bid you adieu. Cheers, guys. Thanks for that. We'll see you soon. Bye. Happened.